let's go ahead and make a three-legged, two-tiered table in Fusion 360. The first thing we want to do is make sure we have our user parameters set up. Here I have a parameter for ply, height, the size of the top of the table, the size of the middle shelf, and the size of my router bit. Go ahead and put in values that make sense for your project. The first thing I'm going to do is make a top-level component. This component will be top. Then I'm going to make an offset plane from the ground plane. I'm going to go up a height of height. Then on this new construction plane, I'll create a sketch for the top. I can create a circle starting on the origin, and this will be top. Now that is fully constrained, and I can finish my sketch. I'll press E to extrude, and I'll go negative ply. Now we have our top. I'll make another top level component, call this new component. This one will be called shelf. Let's make another offset plane. So I'll make a construction plane from the ground plane, and we'll go up height divided by two. On this new plane, let's make another component. On this new plane, let's make a new sketch. I'll grab a circle tool. I'll draw a circle from the origin, and I'll make it the size of shelf. I'll finish my sketch. And then I'll press E to extrude, and we'll go negative ply. Press OK. Let's make one more top level component, and we'll call this one leg. We'll create a sketch. Make the sketch on any of the wall planes. Then press P to project. Make sure you have the body selection filter on. Select both bodies. Then press OK. Now we'll sketch out a leg. Grab the rectangle tool. We need a tab to connect the top, so let's draw one. We can make this ply divided by two, then press the tab key. And then we can make this 40. It's a good size tab. And then we'll go ahead and dimension it from the side. From here, we'll make this ply. So that's all locked in. Let's add a tab to this shelf as well. So we'll press R for a rectangle. We'll draw a rectangle here. And this dimension will be ply divided by two. Press the tab key to move to the next dimension. And we'll make this one 25. We'll also dimension this from the side. And we'll make it a distance of ply. Now we just need to connect these two pieces together. So we can do that with lines, with arcs, anything we want. So I'm going to draw down. And I think I'll have it come like over like this. And then we'll have some sort of angled piece like that. We'll make it really pointy and pokey. And I'll have another off-center one. We'll make it come all the way over. We'll go down to the ground. Do we want that parallel? Let's keep it unparalleled and then see what happens. Then we'll go straight across. And then we'll go all the way up to the top and connect right here. So I think I want these two lines to be parallel. And do I want this one parallel? Yeah, let's make that one parallel too. And then we'll have this one be a asymmetric. So now we have to give this some dimensions. So let's see what this looks like from here to here. How about 250? That's a nice round number. Now we need to make sure that this is coincident with the origin. So we'll click on the origin, then this bottom line. That'll make sure that the leg is on the ground. And as you see, we're starting to get the sketch dimensioned. So now let's, we need to give these angles. So let's give this an angle, about 150. And then we need to give this an angle. So we'll go from, we'll press the D key, go from both places. And then we'll give this an angle of 45. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to tell where this piece is. So we could have it be farther in like this. We can just decide how we want it to look. We'll make them both collinear, this piece and this piece. And now they're collinear all the way down, and that will fully define our sketch. We have the padlock. We can go ahead and finish the sketch. We'll rotate. Press E for extrude. Make sure you grab all the pieces. And then we want to go symmetric, and our distance will be ply divided by two. So now we have our leg, and we can always come back and edit this sketch to create a different leg. Let's go up and activate the top level component. 
We now want to create a pattern. This will be a circular pattern. And we want to copy components. We want to copy this leg, then select the axis. We want the origin axis, and then we can decide how many legs we want. We could have four legs or five legs or six legs. Make it go all the way around to have lots of legs. All right, but let's just keep it at three legs for now. Press OK. While we're at the top level component, we're going to make some subtractions. Click the Combine tool and click the top. That's the target body. The tool bodies will be these legs. Then we'll press OK. We'll do one more combination. We'll click the shelf as the target body. And then the tool bodies will be the legs. Click all three. And then OK. Now we just have to add T bone fillets to the different pieces. So we can isolate the top, activate it, and isolate. We'll look at it from the bottom. And then we'll draw a sketch on here. We need to draw circles for the T bone fillets. And we want to think about how are the tabs going. So the tabs are running this way. We want to be able to hide our fillets. So on this sketch, we'll press P to project. Okay, so now we have that geometry. And then in the top, we'll hide the bodies. And we'll press C. We want them coincident here with the dimension of bit. Then here as well, coincident with the dimension of bit. And then make them tangent. And then two more circles here with the dimension of bit. And also here with the dimension of bit. Make them tangent with the edge. And in this case, since we did a circular pattern, we could also make a circular pattern here. So we'll go ahead and get circular pattern. We need to pick the objects we want to pattern. It's these four circles. Then we need to pick the center point. In this case, it's the origin. Automatically, it's going to go three and everything will be in the right place. If it's the wrong number, if it was four, you'd have to change this number here. But we want three, we'll press OK, and we'll finish our sketch. We can show the body again, press E to extrude, then we want to grab all of these circles. Another way to do this is to do the extrude and then make a circular pattern of that feature. Neither way is correct. It's how you want to model and how you expect to make changes later. And for the distance, we're going to go negative ply divided by two. And make sure it's cut, press enter. And then now we have our T-bone fillets on the top shelf. We'll repeat that for the bottom shelf. So we can activate the shelf and then isolate it. We'll create a sketch right on the bottom. Press P to project, get the geometry, press OK. Then we'll draw some circles. We need one circle here, dimension of bit. We need another circle here, dimension of bit. One more circle here, make sure it's on the line, dimension of bit. One more circle here, on the line, dimension of bit. Then we make them each tangent to the edge of the tab or the edge of the mortise. This one will be tangent here, and then this one will be tangent here. Once again, we can create a circular pattern. We can click on the objects we want to pattern. This one, this one, this one, and this one. And we need to pick the center point, which once again will be the origin, and it defaults to three, and that's perfect. We'll finish our sketch, and then we can extrude. Grab all the pieces. We want the pieces that are going to cut into the tab to allow a square piece to fit in after being cut by the router. And our distance will be negative ply divided by two. Okay, so now we need to do this to the legs. Activate leg one, right click to isolate. So now we're on leg one. And we have to do this to both of these tabs. And we should think about how they're going to go in. So we want to have them on this lower part here. So we'll create a sketch on leg one. 
and then we'll press P to project to get the geometry. Press OK. And then we want our circles to be coincident with this line. So we'll draw a circle here, and the dimension is bit. We want it to be tangent with this lower line here, but we need a construction line going across. So we'll draw a line from here to here, and then we'll select that line, press X on your keyboard to make it a construction line. Then we can make this line tangent to it. We need to make one more circle. We'll have it coincident on this line. The dimension will be bit. And then we'll make it tangent to our construction line. Now we need to do the same thing for this tab. We'll make a circle here, dimension of bit. And we'll make another circle over here, dimension of bit. Then we'll draw a line from here to here. We'll select that line, press X to make it a construction line. Then we'll get our tangent constraint. And both of these circles need to be tangent with this line. We'll finish our sketch. We'll select each of these half circles. And if it won't let you select, click and hold. And then we can go through this menu to pick the piece we want. So click and hold. And then select the profile that you want. Click and hold, and then select that profile. Click and hold, and then select the profile. And our distance wants to be negative ply. And we can double check. It's cutting through. And we'll say OK. Now I'm going to unisolate the leg. And we want to repeat that on all the other legs. And because it's a mirrored pattern, we've repeated this on all of the legs. So now we have that already made. And now we're ready to lay all our parts flat. To do that, let's make a new top level component. We'll call this component CNC. Inside CNC, we'll make a new component. We'll call this plywood. Inside plywood, we'll create a sketch on the ground plane. We'll draw a rectangle, and we'll make that rectangle 48 inches by 48 inches. Let's dimension the rectangle from the origin. We'll say 400. And then we'll make it coincident with the origin at the top. Finish the sketch. Press E to extrude. Dimension apply. And now we need to make a copy of our piece. Let's activate the top level CNC component. Shift click on each of the pieces, right click the copy, right click on the CNC component and paste. Move the components to the side and then press OK. Hide the top components so we don't see the original model and get confused. And now we'll create joints. But before we create our joints, we gotta right click on plywood and ground it. This way it won't move around. You can press J on your keyboard or click this icon. Let's click the top and then click on the plywood and then it goes down onto the ground. We can press OK. Let's do the next joint. Press J on your keyboard. Click the top of the shelf, then the plywood. You can press OK. These are all planar joints. Press J. And then here you want to make sure that that blue line is pointed out. Click here. Then on the plywood. And OK. And then we need to do two more joints. So we'll click on there, click on the plywood, and click OK. One more joint. Click on the plywood. And then OK. Now we need to move these around. So let's look at the top view. And we'll start with the top. Click it over on the browser, then press M. And because we made planar joints, we can slide these around in plane and then press OK, then click the shelf, press M, and we can move it around in plane, and press OK. Then we have a leg, we'll press M. We can move it in plane, and we can rotate it as needed to fit it onto our piece, and press OK. And then we need leg five to move, we'll press M, move it into position, rotate it, and now it is done. The only thing you need to do if you're moving joints around like this, you need to make sure you click up here, capture position. We can show our model again. Activate the top level component. 
And now we have a model that can be edited and our parts layout will update automatically.